Life imitates art. It is like a dramatic grand sonata divided into an exposition, development, and recapitulation, filled with joys and pain. It is heartbreaking when one loses a mother and devastating when the father goes immediately after. But to have to swallow the demise of a third parent, as Solomon Mikowski was to me, is an indescribable chronic pain in the core of my existence. I call them my parental trinity. My mother birthed me and my deep love for classical music. My father disciplined me with much wisdom, compassion, and sacrifice. <clears throat> and Dr. Mikowski is responsible for cementing my musical and artistic principles and values and instilled in me why I should go beyond lengths to defend them without compromise and propagate them with conviction. Since I was that preteen brat, my life was, if you will, and harmonically changed, just like, for example, G sharp into A flat. Through him, I gained the acumen to equipoise a vast sea of knowledge, logic, skill, history, literature, culture, and most importantly, how to trust my instincts, which he called the closest thing to the truth. I further absorbed the numerous how-tos in music that reflect life itself, and in consequence, captured the evasive shadow of having the ability to manage time, the universal element he embraced more than life itself. One of Dr. Mikowski's former students, the great Egyptian pianist Wael Farouk, who joined our studio at Manhattan School of Music years after I graduated, said to me that we, Dr. Mikowski's first generation pupils, such as Aaron Shore, Adam Kent, Elena Belli, Simone Dinnerstein, Martin Soderberg, to name a few. We were responsible for laying down the foundation of his insurmountable pedagogical legacy. Although there might be accuracy to that fact, what really established him was his uncanny gift of catering to the needs of each of his hundreds of disciples of different backgrounds, cultures, and personalities, as distinct as the music we each created. The accolades, awards, and successes I garnered throughout my life aren't about me. They are all fruits of my parental trinity's extraordinary selflessness, extreme patience, endearing understanding, and the miracle of transforming frustrations into opportunities. It was to my benefit to simply listen and accept. My personal relationship with Dr. Mikowski was like what all loving relationships ought to be, perfect imperfection. Or just like in piano, the lonely struggle of an imperfect pianist to practice until it is near perfect in order to transform lives or at the very least please a plethora of imperfect humans accomplished with the awareness that even practice can never achieve perfection. When it came to my music only his opinion mattered to me to this day. Speaking of which in August 2020, during the pandemic lockdown in Manila, I had sent him a home video recording of Franz Liszt's transcription of Robert Schumann's Widmung. He immediately emailed me back saying, and I could hear his tender tenor voice with his unique sexy accent while reading, one thing I want to make clear, stating it with the greatest sincerity. Your performance of the Schumann was 
absolutely great. This is as great as it can be. Having heard this beautiful Schumann song as a Liszt etude too many times. But then, in a subsequent email, your piano sounds bad. Why don't you have it tuned? To which I replied, really? In a pandemic lockdown? Perfect imperfection. There was a time he asked me to call him Solomon or Salomon to those who spoke Spanish and no longer Dr. Mikowski as I had always addressed him when I was a student. I refused. I could never refer to him as my equal. My respect for him surpasses all levels of respect I have for the rest of humanity. It is common knowledge that he didn't believe in God and I regret not having the opportunity to explain to him why and how my faith put me where I am today. I've desired to tell him God must exist because among all the children on this side of the planet at that particular point in time when there were so many others more worthy than I regardless of my gender, race, creed, or color, that God sent me a Messiah of music, prophesying that love for music is loving life itself. Dr. Mikowski is not dead. He lives in me, just like the rest of my parental trinity. He lives on in my daughter's life, in the lives of my very few selected students, and in our audience's lives. He lives on in each of his pupils' lives and we are a multitude. He continues to change the direction of the melodies of our lives, gathering us to be in harmony, dynamically coloring the nuances of our character, circumnavigating through an overextended coda in the eternal pursuit for music to never ever reach a cadence. I love you, Dr. Mikowski. I always have and I always will. And if one sparkling beautiful note, the one that has always intoxicated you, represents my gratitude for you, may God allow me to play those notes infinitely. <laughs>